Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to achieve your educational goals by helping you gain admission into health-related undergrad and graduate programs. And today we are talking about how to get into med school, specifically focusing on what high school students should be doing right now in order to become a doctor. Uh, don't get me started. But before we get started, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe and make sure you press the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. So I like to break this down into two types of students. Either you're that student who has known since age of 10 what school they want to go to, what med school they want to go to, what residency program they want to go to, what specialty they want to go into. You know, if you're that person and you know that Harvard, Harvard, Harvard is where you want to go, you're that Ivy League girl, you're that Ivy League guy, then you need to take all of my advice and multiply it by 10, okay? Because you have to be the best of the best, obviously. Most of you guys will fall into the majority category. You're going to go to an average school that, you know, you're going to get an average GPA, you're going to have an average MCAT, and it's okay. Because whenever you get to med school, everybody's smart. Everybody's gifted and talented. Everybody has great critical thinking skills. And everybody's going to usually fall within that bell curve, right? So that means you're average and it's okay, okay? So that's one thing that you just need to accept uh, <laughs> as you start your journey into medical school and ultimately becoming a doctor. So I think the biggest key that you guys need to focus on um, is obviously getting into the college of your choice. Now, I say of your choice because there are some factors that you need to consider now when selecting what college you attend. At the end of the day, I want you guys to keep an open mind and really realize that once you get to the end of the road, where you started becomes less and less important, honestly. Um, a lot of people will say, oh no, you want to go to the top colleges, you want to go to the college that's the best pre-med program, you want to go to the school that produces the most medical students, and all of that sounds true, but at the end of the day, all of us just cannot go to those schools, right? The majority of us will end up at schools that are just average, like I said, just average, okay? Produces the average amount of med school students, has the average pre-med program, and has the average graduates. All right, and it's okay. So things that you need to consider when choosing your college is, number one, the academics. Does the college have the major that you wanna major in? And then also, does it have a good pre-med program? And when I say good pre-med program, I just mean that they have advisors who know what they're doing. They know how to help students arrange their schedules so that they're taking classes that are going to actually maximally benefit them for the MCAT. Uh, they have different research opportunities. They have opportunities for students to shadow um, they already know what needs to go into a letter of, a rec letter of recommendation, things like that, things that are going to help you actually be a stronger applicant. You want to look for programs like that. And the best way to do that is to literally pick up the phone and call the department of whatever college you're interested in and just say, hey, I'm a potential student. I want to hear a little bit about your biology department and what pre-med opportunities you guys offer to your students. Or send an email or however you want to contact them. Another thing that you need to consider is obviously cost. A lot of people ask me, how much do I owe back in loans? And luckily for me, I attended an undergrad where I had all of my tuition and room and board and everything paid. So I didn't pay a dime for my college degree. All of my debt has come from medical school. And so if you want to know how to minimize your debt after everything is over, you should definitely consider how much you're spending in undergrad, but mainly because where you attend undergrad usually doesn't matter when you go to medical school. No one cares after that, right? And so why spend so much money on an undergrad if you're going to end up at an average med school anyway? So really consider how much you want to spend for college. Another thing to consider is location. Do you want to travel and be across the country and experience a new, a new life? Or do you feel like you do better you know, close to home, close to family, close to friends. Make sure you consider location. You want to be somewhere where you're comfortable and where you thrive. And speaking of being comfortable and thriving, you also want to make sure the environment of the school is conducive to you and your learning and your experience. Visit the school, okay? I know right now tours may be suspended because of everything that's going on with the pandemic, but as soon as things open back up and things go to some type of normal, make sure you participate in campus tours or if they have virtual tours, take the time to watch them because you want to make sure you're in a place where you're comfortable so that you'll do well and perform well. I personally attended an HBCU where 99% of the student population is black. 
I felt right at home, right? But the next person may not feel that way. Even black people may not feel comfortable at HBCU. So make sure you are visiting those schools and make sure you feel like you can actually do well wherever you end up going. And then the last thing I wanna uh, bring up is opportunities. Um, just making sure that whatever school you go to, you actually have opportunities that are going to help you uh, in the future. And I would say opportunities like extracurricular activities, campus organizations, uh, additional scholarships that you didn't initially apply for, research opportunities, being able to shadow uh, doctors or whatever connects your department may have. And opportunity is a twofold thing. Number one, it has to be there. And then number two, you have to be qualified. And with qualifications comes everybody else's qualifications. So you wanna make sure you're actually putting yourself in a position to actually get whatever those opportunities are. If there's one scholarship and 5,000 apply, your chances of getting that scholarship are you know, slim to none. But if there's one scholarship and only 20 people are applying, then there you go. You're a little bit more competitive and have a chance at getting that opportunity so keep that in mind so i've said this a million times it does not matter what you major in medical schools do not care only thing you need to worry about is making sure you take your prerequisites that the medical schools require and that you do well on the mcat so if you're a good student and you can major in something like art or psychology and then you can also learn everything you need to learn for the mcat and do well in those prerequisite courses then you're good to go um, if you want to check out a video that I made that talks about the best pre-med majors, in that video, I go over the common majors that medical school applicants actually apply with and then also their rates of admission. So you can look at that video. Also, if you're stuck between biology and nursing, I also made another video for that. You can look at that video to get my opinion on what you should choose based off of your particular needs. But other than that, guys, you can major in whatever you want to major in. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. I majored in biology because I did not know there was no one to tell me that I didn't have to okay if I would have known I probably would have majored in something totally different like accounting or something okay so <laughs> um, you don't have to major in biology or chemistry or a science at all next thing I want to talk about is a lot of people ask me if medical schools accept community college credits um, the answer is yes they do but they also state that they have a preference for courses that were completed at a four-year university so if i were you guys and you wanted to start at a community college or you you've already taken um some courses at a community college if it's stuff like english and psychology and like you know stuff like that then it probably doesn't really matter but once you get into your science courses um i would definitely recommend trying to take those at a university just so you won't come across any problems when it comes to applying to med school so the first thing i want to talk about is obviously your academics everyone talks about that what do i need to be studying right now guys you do not need to be studying for the mcat while you are in high school please do not study for the MCAT while you are in high school, all right? Just focus on your current academic requirements. Try to get the best GPA that you can get. Obviously, your SAT, ACT scores, whatever exit level exam you have for your school or your state in Texas, I know it's the STAR test. Um, focus on those grades, okay? And then also, you want to focus on other things like trying to develop the best essay that you can if you're applying to a school that requires an essay or a scholarship that requires an essay focus on getting your letters of recommendation from your teachers focus on participating in your school organizations any volunteer things that you can do all right because all of that is what you use to get into the college of your choice right you want to present yourself as the best applicant so all those things need to be as on point as possible so that is what you should be focusing on the biggest thing for your academics right now in high school is to simply start to challenge yourself okay that is what's going to help you to get into med school that's what's going to help you do well in your pre-med courses do well on the mcat is when you already have methods for critically thinking you already know how to reason and you already know how to stretch your mind okay because that is what this journey takes you're going to go from one level of learning to this level to this level to this level and every time you think you've mastered something you think you can't stretch your brain anymore you end up stretching it just a little bit more just a little bit more and a little bit more after that if you can already kind of get used to challenging yourself 
taking multiple AP classes at one time, doing dual credit. And if you're already in all AP classes and dual credit classes, great. Start reading uh, things that have nothing to do with school, you know, just to kind of get your mind used to just reading because it's going to be a lot of reading. Do challenging activities or play games, things that make you critically think, okay? Because right now you're training yourself, you're training your mind to be able to handle the pre-med courses in the MCAT because that is when most people change their mind. They get to college, they're in these science classes and they can't handle the load. They can't handle MCAT studying or they take the MCAT, they bomb it, and instead of trying again, they just quit and give up. So if you wanna get anything prepared right now, prepare this and it's not necessarily with knowledge, more so on how to internalize knowledge. It doesn't matter what you're actually studying, just learn how to learn, okay? Become a good learner, become a good student. You can start that right now in high school. A few other things that you need to be able to do later on in, in your pre-med courses, MCAT or in med school, is to already have good habits, okay? So start to develop good habits like study habits. And if you need help or any tips on studying, I have a video that you guys can check out where I talk about some of the study habits and techniques that has helped me get to where I am. It has definitely proven to uh, improve my grades, my, my scores, and just my overall learning experience throughout this journey. So study habits is definitely one. Go ahead and start to develop those now. Learn how to be organized and how to set a schedule and actually follow that schedule. If you can master this now in high school, you will save yourself so much time and, and energy later on in college and definitely in med school. And two big ones are procrastination and self-accountability. So procrastination, as you know, uh, I felt like I got through college, um, okay, I procrastinated a lot, all the way up into the MCAT, and when I bombed it, I realized that, okay, my procrastination has really gotten the best of me, and it's time for me to get on, get on the ball, right? So if you guys can figure out how to not procrastinate, not put things off to later, go ahead and get her done. Um, it's gonna help you a lot later on in life, um, trust me, I know it's a whole bunch of abstract um, advice and tips, but it really does make a difference. And if you can master that now, you will so thank yourself later on. Okay. And then another thing is self-accountability, being able to do what you're supposed to do without being told and without having to have somebody else to push you to do it. So one major difference between high school and college is that mommy's not there. You know, daddy's not there unless you stay at home with your parents. No one's there to make sure you wake up and, and catch the bus. No one's there to make sure you go to class. There's no one there to make sure when you go to class, you're actually learning and studying and doing what you're supposed to do. And then my last two tips of advice are very simple. As much as you can, start to learn the knowledge and the process of becoming a doctor. Don't focus on the science. You don't need to know the different organs and organ failure and what blood products and, and you don't need to know that type of stuff, okay? But what you do need to know is how you actually get there so that you're doing what you're supposed to do to increase your chances of actually getting into med school. Now, this is important for a lot of students who do not end up at a college that has a good pre-med program with good advisors who are telling you what to do step by step. You have to know what is going on. And that is why I'm really on YouTube and on Instagram now is to help people who don't have that. But you wanna know the process, okay? College, med school, residency. Okay, yeah, we all know that. But it's very detailed, okay? There are tests that are involved. You have to take it by a certain time. Most applications start a year in advance. So knowing that you have to apply one year and you won't start to the following year, knowing how much the test actually costs, knowing that interviews can be expensive depending on where you apply, okay? So knowing the process of how to actually become a doctor is something that you could be learning right now in high school. Kind of referring back to what I was saying earlier, just accepting the fact that everybody that makes it to med school is smart. Okay, everybody that makes it to med school is probably that high school student who made straight A's and top of the class and, you know, class rank was, was on point and top 10% and got all the scholarships. Everybody that makes it to med school was probably that person. There are a few who goofed off in high school, goofed off in college and then got it together and went to med school. But most people are smart okay so accept that and know that it is okay to be average it is okay to kind of just fall into the pile 
along with everybody else. You can accept that now you will save yourself from a lot of depression and anxiety of trying to keep up and trying to prove yourself to people when you really don't have anything to prove to other people. So if you don't do anything else, stay motivated, focus on your current academics and know the process of becoming a doctor. And that's probably the best thing you can do as a high school student.